Okay, so welcome everyone online. Uh, welcome everyone in the building. Uh, if you went on, if we went online and we were singing Happy Birthday, it's because Brian Weller's birthday this morning. So Happy Birthday, Brian! Uh, welcome everyone online. Welcome everyone in the building. Uh, if you just do a quick shot of everyone in the building, just for a second, just to let you people know we've got lots of people here and it's lovely. <laughs> Hallelujah! We're here to worship Jesus. And we're going to look at and listen to the Word of God. And I want to read you a psalm as we get going. I read this this morning. It says this in Psalm 97, The Lord reigns. And it's important that we remember that and we keep bringing that thought before us in our personal lives, but also in, in our community, in our nation, and in the nations. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. It's okay. It's, it's going to be okay because the Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mount mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. You see, God is a powerful God. We can't play fast and loose with the Lord. He's in charge and he's very, very powerful. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame, those who boast in idols. Worship him, you gods. Zion hears and rejoices. That will be for us the church, won't it? The church is hearing and rejoicing. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted above all gods. We used to sing a song like that, didn't we? Let those who love the Lord hate evil for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked light shines out of on the light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in heart rejoice in the lord for you who are righteous and praise his holy name that last verse rejoice in the lord you who are righteous and we come clothed with the righteousness of jesus he's made us righteous because of his death and resurrection and ascension we have now been clothed with his righteousness he who became sin who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God so come on let's rejoice let's give ourselves again to God in worship together amen John is going to lead us in worship thanks John let's, let's uh, I don't know the policies <laughs> stand let's stand shall we I've been waiting uh a very long time to lead worship with a singing congregation um, and I'm so excited uh, so let's just let's just thank him let's praise him let's just lift up our voices in praise and thanks let's just give him a big thanks and a big praise here thank you Lord God thank you that you are an amazing God thank you that you reign over all things. Thank you that you are beautiful. Thank you that you've brought us salvation. Lord God, thank you that you reign on high, Lord God. Let's worship. to wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you there's none like you into the dawn as you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you
Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you Oh, none like you Our God is greater Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer
from my sin and penalty at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace sing that again hallelujah i am free from my sin and penalty at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace sing that again hallelujah hallelujah i am free from my sin and penalty at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace hallelujah we're going to sing a new song of celebration Lord, how you love me, I don't deserve grace on top of grace. More than I've asked for, more than I'm worth, grace on top of grace. Just sing that again, Lord. Lord, how you love me, I don't deserve grace on top of grace. sweet the sound how sweet the sound once lost now found heaven came down and grace rescued me hallelujah i am free from my sin and penalty had the cross you took my place with your grace on
sweet the sound How sweet the sound Once lost, now found Heaven came down And grace rescued me How sweet the sound Once lost, now found Heaven rescued me Hallelujah I am free from my sin and penalty and the cross you took my place with your grace on top of me Hallelujah Hallelujah I am free from my sin and penalty and the cross you took with your grace on top of grace, with your grace, with your grace on top of grace, with your grace on top of
Yes, thank you, Lord. We give you glory, Jesus. King of the ages. Yeah. Lord of our lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. No wonder the ancients prayed, Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Who is a God like you? So full of grace and truth and righteousness and justice and mercy. Rich in God is rich in mercy. And I'd like us to pray for grace for some people this morning. We, we probably all know Trevor had his operation last week. Um, let's pray for Trevor and for Anne. But there's other people that we know who are not well at the moment. Dear Richard Taylor's got COVID. He's at home. Uh, obviously, Shield, and he's picked it up, bless him. Um, there's a whole bunch of people who are not, not well at the moment, and I, I've got a list if you want me to go through them, but many of us know who they are. Can we just pray together? Let's lift up our voices, and let's pray for, for those who are suffering. Let's pray God's grace be on them. Let's, let's, there are people who are still isolated, being on their own for week after week. Uh, Jackie Wright, we were just talking about her this morning let's just pray for Bob Easton let's pray for some of these who are just on their own let's pray let's ask God to pour out his grace on them people who are suffering right now Lord God we Lord we bring these ones before you Lord Vic and and Hev Lord we bring them before you Anne and Trevor Lord we bring them before you Lord God Lord Diane we bring her again before you Lord we lift her up before you Lord Susie here Lord we lift her before you Jesus Lord God, we, Father, we want to lift these ones before you. The ones who are suffering right now, Lord God. For Lee, with his operation, Lord, suffering, Lord. Uh, Lord, even with things going wrong in the house, we pray for him. We lift him up before you, Lord God. We pray grace upon grace for these ones, Lord. We pray they might know, Lord, your nearness. We thank you, Jesus. You promised you would never leave us. You would never forsake us, Lord. We thank you for your promise that you are God, Emmanuel. You are with us. Hallelujah. We, Lord, as we keep worshipping you, Lord, draw our hearts closer to you, we pray. Lord, it's wonderful to come together and to worship you like this. Lord, fix our eyes on you, Lord. Help us to fix our eyes on you, the author, the perfecter of our faith. Thank you, Jesus. Man of sorrows, Thank you. 
is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me, whom the Son sets free. voices in praise. Where you are, let's lift them high. Yes, Lord, praise and honor be unto thee, Lord. Sing out, church. Sing out. Oh, tell God. Tell God how great he is, how merciful he is. Oh, thank you, Lord. Jesus. 
life worth living. Lord, you're the one that gives eternal life in all its fullness. Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, would come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again.
Bible says, this is, thus says the Lord, this is the one I'm looking towards. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? What is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made. And so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and who trembles at my word. There's such key there, isn't there, as we worship the Lord. Thank you, Johnny, for leading us in that lovely song. We bow down. We humble ourselves. We bow down. We are contrite before God. We can't make things happen, but he can. We can seek him and be found by him as we seek him. And this last sentence just says, and trembles at my word. And Lord, we want to tremble at your word to us this morning. We want to tremble before you, Lord. You are the one who made us and keeps us and holds us and saves us. So, fathers, we come to your word. Help us to come with humility, with ears that are open, Lord, to hearing what you say. Not what we think, but what you say. Father, we pray for Jordan as he uh, comes to preach now. Lord, we pray, speak to him, speak through him, speak to us. Unblock any stubborn ears, Lord. <laughs> stubborn heart Lord unblock us Lord so that your word lands on good soil and bears much fruit we pray Father in Jesus name Amen Amen thanks guys for leading us so well bless you thank you thank you yeah really good Thank you, Johnny and the band, for leading us so wonderfully. Okay. Right. So, some of you might not know that this will be my last sermon for a little while, uh, at least in this room, um, for about a year or so. Um, you might see me on screen, I'm sure, from time to time, but... Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, we're continuing our uh, sermon series, rather, in Joshua, uh, and we find ourselves at chapter 10. So chapter 10 seemed to be a good place to look at where we've been so far. So I'm gonna, there's going to be a bit of a whistle-stop tour through chapters 1 to 10, and then this morning I'm going to be talking on chapters one, um, 10 to 13. So we're not going to read all of that because it's a huge uh, passage of scripture, but I'm going to give a sort of uh, summary over that and then we're going to pick up in certain places through chapters 10 to 13 um, and uh, as we go along. So let me just pray and, uh, and we'll get ahead. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for this book uh, that I have the privilege of uh, speaking out of this morning. Please let my words only be yours um, and by your spirit. Uh, please help us to have open ears, open hearts and open minds. Amen. So, where have we been so far? God has commissioned a new leader, Joshua. God is preparing his people for the promised land and the fight they'll have to attain it. The commission to God's people to arise and take the land God has given them. We see Rahab hide the spies and come to faith herself. Israel then crosses the dry Jordan. The 12 memorial stones are then laid, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. God then calls a new generation to be circumcised. And we see the fall of Jericho and the walking around the city walls. We see Israel lose 3,000 men in a fight with Ai and the sin of Achan. With Achan plundering treasures for himself and burying them. We read then of the fall of Ai, my last sermon a few weeks ago, 
uh, where Joshua employed an ambush on the people of Ai and led God's people to victory. After this victory, Joshua renews the covenant by the reading of the law. Next, we have the Gibeonite deception, where the Gibeonites act as poor foreigners, but Joshua extends mercy and does not kill them. And now we land at chapter 10. And the next three chapters we'll be looking at this morning, and as I say, I won't read all three of them, but we'll go through a summary of the three chapters and we'll look at some specific verses as we go through. So, strap in, Joshua 10 to 13. So we've got King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem hears about the sieges of Jericho and Ai, as well as the Treaty of Gibeon, and becomes incredibly frightened. He calls the king of Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish and Eglon to make war against Gibeon and get back at them for making peace with Joshua. The kings agree and everyone sets up their war camps. The Gibeonites send word to Joshua that they are going to be attacked and Joshua and his army ride through the night to help. The opposing army panics at the sight of the Israelites and flees into a hailstorm that kills most of them. The text backtracks for a moment to let us know that the reason God was so on top of things for this fight was that Joshua asked God for God's help for his army to succeed. The Israelites return to Gilgal where they they were originally camped. Word reaches Joshua that the five kings are hiding in a cave at Makeda. Joshua decides that if they want to hide, they can stay hidden. So you order some men to roll a large stone in front of the cave and block the kings inside. The Israelites are told to hunt down the remaining warriors and waylace to them, which of course they do. When Joshua orders the stone rolled away from the cave, he also orders the kings brought before him. Joshua kills all five of them and hangs them each from their own tree. When the sun starts to set, Joshua has those five dead kings tossed back into the cave and the cave sealed up again with stones. King Jabin of Hazor hears of the Israelites' further conquests and gathers together the kings of Madon, Shimron, Ashap, along with the wandering tribes of the Chinneroth, Napothdor, Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Hivites and Mizpah. Chapter 11. This army gathers together at Meron to fight Israel. This strategy didn't work for them last time, um, for the last men who challenged Israel. But for some reason, Jabin's army think it will work for them. God tells Joshua not to fear for all their enemies would be vanquished. Joshua leads the Israelites and slays the opposing army. Joshua personally slays the king of Hazor and burns him. The Israelites take all of the loot they can find. Only two tribes make peace with Israel, the Gibeonites and some of the Hivites. Generally speaking, the Canaanites didn't stand a chance of making peace with Israel since God had hardened their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle. The war of Canaan is finally over. Joshua gives all the tribes their allotment of land. Chapter 12, he retells the conquest, sorry, chapter 12 retells the conquest of Canaan in rapid succession. We move from one conquered place to another and to the next without any stopping. And now Joshua is advanced in years. And God tells Joshua that he's old and he needs to get a move on, divvying up the land to the 12 tribes of Israel. The book discusses um, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had already received their land. The nine other tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh are waiting to receive their territories. The Levites receive no inheritance. Instead, they receive meat meant as sacrifice. And the next chunk, the last chunk of this chapter is a verbal map, letting us know which tribe gets which parcels of land. We can't help that noticing uh, after marching through all of Canaan, the Israelites have ended back at the Jordan River to settle. And that's the end of the summary. But... So, back to the beginning of chapter 10. The leader of this group, the king of Jerusalem, is an interesting figure. His name, Adonai Zedek, means Lord of Righteousness, though we see him really as the opposite to a Lord of Righteousness. 
If anything, he represents the Antichrist, set against Joshua's representation of Jesus Christ. The enemies of Israel feared greatly, but like our spiritual enemies, they don't retreat when they are afraid, but launch attacks that are even bolder as a wild animal would when it feels attacked. The Gibeonites rightly looked to the people of Israel as their helpers and protectors. They were not too proud to call for help, and we mustn't be either. We have somewhat of a mental health pandemic going on at the moment, and COVID has only brought that more to the surface. We mustn't be too proud to ask for help. In any situation, in our families, in our friendships, in our marriages, and especially our sin. We must not be too proud to admit we're struggling with sin or temptation. The enemy feeds on knowing we are too proud to ask for help. And I personally struggle with asking for help, especially with about being wrong. And I don't like being wrong, although I'm wrong often. Um, <laughs> and I don't like admitting it. And I don't like asking for help. So if I don't know something, I don't like asking people for help because I don't know something. I'd much rather try and figure it out myself, which sometimes that's okay. But sometimes you really need to ask someone for help. And I'm not very good at that. So please call me out if I don't ask you for help. And I look like I need help. Um, God tells Joshua not to fear his enemies. This is a command. Though Joshua has reason to fear because Israel faces an army of five kings, God commands Joshua to not fear his enemies. And we mustn't either. The command is coupled with a promise. We can, we can obey God's command not to fear because we have his promise of victory. Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. No matter what happens to us in this life, nothing can touch the security of what we have in the next. The Apostle Paul says, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Having the assurance of God's promise, Joshua did not sit back passively and watch God's, God work without his participation. He went to great effort to participate in the work and will of God. And we must Sometimes God's will for our lives does not go in the direction that we may have dreamed of. If you'd have asked me two years ago, um, or just over, that I'd be working here and training with the church and getting ready to move across the world to fulfil God's plan for my life, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But God has a plan for all of us. But we must participate in it with him. As Ray was speaking to us last week, listening and moving. Verse 9, the all-night march. This took hard work and initiative on Joshua's part. The march from Gilgal to Gibeon, I've read, involved a climb of 3,300 feet. And the distance was about 20 miles. And apparently, this would take 8 to 10 hours of hard marching all through the night. God does his work, but he draws us into working with him. Often God waits to see our initiative, our willingness to be a partner with him before he does what only he can do. This is not the idea that God helps those who help themselves, but the idea that God wants to draw his people into partnership with him in seeing his work done. Verse 11, the Lord hurled large hailstones. The hailstones which killed the retreating armies of the Canaanites were obviously miraculous. The hail itself could have been a phenomenon of nature, but their aim and timing clearly displayed the hand of God. And we see this in our lives, things that could very well just be put down to coincidence or good favour but all too coincidental to not be of God. When we are following God's will, things seem to just fall into place. But that's not always easy. And me and 
My wife Becca have seen this in our preparation to move to South Africa. Endless paperwork, visits to London, no contact from the embassy, but knowing that God had spoken and praying for his will to be done and a positive outcome. And I'm glad to say that last week our visas were approved and we have the green light to go and continue the work that God is doing through us for the glory of his kingdom. And when it's God's will, it happens, regardless of the complications and the obstacles. We notice that Joshua didn't wait around for the hail to come. He was busy doing what he could do in partnership with God, and God, and God did what only God could do. And we need to do that too. We can't sit around expecting God to do everything for us, waiting for him to act. We need to participate in his purposes together. Like Joshua, we need to rely on God, knowing that there are things that only he can do. All the while knowing that we have a part to play too. Seeing God's miraculous hand in action gave, gave Joshua the boldness to ask for an even more crazy miracle. To keep the day going. To keep the sun from setting so that Israel had time to accomplish a complete victory before darkness fell. And we move to verse 13. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky. And how was the length of this day extended? Could have been a slowing of the earth's rotation. It could have been a tilting of the earth's axis. It could have been a miracle of reflection of light. It could have simply been the presence of God manifested in light. We read in the book of Revelation that there is no sun in heaven as God's glory illuminates the new heaven and earth. However, however the sun stood still, the results were clear. The sun seemed to stay still in the sky and Israel was able to complete the victory. Verse 21. And no one uttered a word against the Israelites. The people of Canaan know beyond any doubt that God is with Joshua and the nation of Israel. Their respect is so great that no one utters a word against them. Just like Israel, the church should be feared in the sense that it should be a place where people know God will conquer them. They should have the idea, well, if I keep coming here, God is going to conquer me. I'll have to submit my life to him. Too many preachers present a harmless God who demands no surrender from his people. And, it only, and it's only in the complete surrender that we've been singing of this morning. Complete surrender to God and participating in his plans that we see his purpose for our lives displayed. Verse 25. Again, we hear this line. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. Joshua and his men walk in the light of the victory won for them with their participation with God. However, we walk in a victory entirely won by Jesus alone. The victory of the cross. A victory over sin and death, purchasing for all those who would believe in him eternity with him. Chapter 11. Again, we see Joshua employing the strategy of an ambush against enemies. Joshua fought with obedience, doing exactly what the Lord told him to do. Even destroying the Canaanite weapons, which the, were the horses and chariots, instead of taking them for his own army and another victory for God's people. Chapter 12, that was a quick one. A list of kings conquered by Israel under the leadership of Moses. These descriptions are important because they make it clear that these things happened in real time and in real space. These are not fairy tales that begin once upon a time. This is history that begins with specific places and people and rulers. And in my Bible plan, I've just started um, in the New Testament and the book of Matthew, and there's a genealogy at the front of that. And I'm previous I would just skip that genealogy you think oh it's the son of this person and this person and this person but when I'm reading uh, commentaries on uh, on uh, Joshua and other things you realize that actually these 
verses and passages are there for a reason. They're important there to show us that this is real and this is a real time, real space, real history, real people. Chapter 13. Even while acknowledging Joshua's advanced years, God still tells him about a job that needs to be done. No matter how much we have done in our Christian lives, there still remains much to do. There is no retiring from God's employment. We are always to be pushing forward in the purposes of God. No retiring till the next life. But when we do finally retire, we will have an eternal pension. That of the glory and riches of our God purchased for us by his son Jesus. What the land was to Israel, Jesus is to us. We are to possess all of him and to keep pressing on to, um, to have all of Jesus. There is still a race to run. How much of Jesus do we have? How much of the Bible do we possess as ours? Do we walk in the blessing of leading others to Jesus Christ? Of answered prayer? Of meeting the needs of others in God's family? Verse 33, speaking of the Levites, the Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as promised to them. The Levites could have been dismayed that they had no inheritance. And many of us are dissatisfied with our place before God. We wish he could have given us something different, a different hand. And we can even be bitter towards God about this. The primary answer to this is to see ourselves as priests and to understand that our real inheritance is God himself. And this is the unfair kingdom of God. Victory and grace for sinners, but not by our own merit or because we deserve it or because we have been obedient enough to earn it. It is solely because of the completed work on the cross by Jesus Christ. Realising our forgiveness adjusts our view of others and changes us. The victory over our enemies, as we have read it here in Joshua, for us is the victory over sin and death won for us by Jesus. And in this victory, we find a new way of living, a way in which we no longer strive alone in this life, but in constant participation with God with his peace that transcends understanding, knowing that he is working these things out for the good of those called according to his will and purpose. We find a new way to live and be with others. We are no longer living for ourselves, but for Jesus. To see his kingdom come and his will be done. Now, if you're here today in the room or watching online, and you want to know more about Jesus, about this church, please speak to one of us in the room or message us in the comments or go to our website and we would love to talk with you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you have a plan for all of our lives. Every one of us, no matter how young, how old, where we are, what we're doing, whether we work full-time for a church or whether we're full-time in the marketplace. We all retired. We pray that you would remind us that there is still work to do until you come again. And we thank you for the participation that you bring to the table. You bring everything that we need for life and godliness. And we pray that you would just come by your spirit now and be with us and remind us of that purpose. Holy Spirit, would you talk to everyone in this room right now and remind them of the purpose that you have given them. Maybe it's a purpose that um, is dormant that God spoke to you a long time ago and said that's your purpose and it's something that's fallen to the wayside I feel this morning that God would say it's time to pick that purpose up again that you have laid to the side there is still a purpose no matter what situation we're in and I pray that the Holy Spirit would remind you of that now and Lord thank you that you have already won the ultimate victory we don't have to strive to be good enough to be worthy. We are not worthy, but you are, and you were on that cross, and you bought our righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
just come back to worship. Let's just surrender all we are to Him again. This love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us this morning. Now, if you've got any questions or comments about this morning's service, please do be in touch uh, using the contact information at the bottom of this screen. Because we're now meeting in person in our building on Main Road as well. And we would love for you to come and join us next week. All the information you'll need to sign up will be coming in a moment. And if you're joining us online, but you don't live locally, I want to encourage you to seek out a local church to where you live to get along to. Now, I realise you may not know where to start with that, so do give us a call and we'll do all that we can to help you. And finally, if you want to find out more about Christianity, about what we believe and why we believe it, you'd be really welcome to join us for Alpha. And that doesn't matter whether you live locally or you live the other side of the world, because we're running it online again. That's going to be starting soon, and you're more than welcome to join us. So for today... That's it. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope to see you next week, whether that's online or in person. God bless you.